So this lesson is solution stoichiometry. So stoichiometric problem solving involving solutions. So you'll notice the familiar mole train here where we have the mass of a certain substance that's given to us in grams and we use the molar mass to convert to the amount in moles of that substance. A balanced equation is required to obtain the mole ratio which we then convert to moles of another substance in the equation. And finally, use molar mass of that second substance to find the mass. And so we're typically following a mass to moles to moles to mass pattern. Just put the grams here. Well, now that we've studied solution chemistry, we realize that it's most common then to have information about the volume and concentration of a solution. So knowing that we have the concentration and volume of a solution, how could we find the moles of solute present? So given C and V, how do you find moles? Hopefully you're thinking N equals C times B, and you've got that right. So once we've determined moles, we'll still use the mole ratio, and then finish off the question however it's uh, required. So if we're asked to find mass of a substance, we'll use molar mass to convert at the end. If we're asked to find concentration or volume, then we'll use either C equals N over V, or in the case of volume, V equals N over C. If we're being asked to find concentration in the end, N will be the amount that we found here after the mole ratio step, and the volume will be provided. If we're trying to find volume, N will be the value that came from the mole ratio step and C would be provided. Now there is a shortcut or a question that doesn't require all three steps. If we're given the concentration of a particular solution and just ask for the concentration of ions that exist in that solution. So we will use the mole ratio in that case and that's coming up in example um, Four, so you'll see that in a moment. Okay, so let's have a look at the first example. We're being asked what volume of a 2.282 moles per liter solution of silver nitrate is needed to precipitate all of the chloride ions present in 45 mils of 0 0.350 mole per liter calcium chloride solution. So as usual, we and we read the question, start with a balanced chemical equation. So since you have some background in stoichiometry at this point, write a balanced equation and then list the variables of each substance that's been given and indicate your required. Okay, so you'll see that I wrote out the silver nitrate and calcium chloride reaction producing calcium nitrate and silver chloride. I do need coefficients, whoops, I do need coefficients of two here and here. Okay, and then I listed the concentration of the silver nitrate, volume question mark, because that's what we're looking for, and the concentration and volume of the calcium chloride solution, which were both provided. I did convert the volume from uh, milliliters to liters, you will see, <clears throat> with the idea of anticipating using um, the amount concentration formula, where volume must be in liters. Okay, so in terms of the pathway here, we've been given, I guess I'll go back to this flowchart here, you can see we've been given concentration and volume of a solution, the calcium chloride, so we can find the moles of calcium chloride, then use the mole ratio to find the moles of silver nitrate, <clears throat> and then V equals N over C to find the volume of silver nitrate. So there are, oops, there are three steps required. So if you understand those steps, you know, go ahead and I would just pause the video and, and get started. Um, otherwise, I'll show the first step here. We're finding the moles of calcium chloride by calculating <clears throat> C times V. And so we have the 0 0.350 times the 0 0.0450. Now, watching sig figs there, you can multiply and round accordingly. So I would not round 
right to the final sig figs because we're not finished the question, but I would keep a couple digits extra. So it looks like three sig figs in each measurement here. So I'm looking to keep at least three. My calculator doesn't show any digits past the five. <clears throat> so I'll definitely at least keep there um, because that would be four sig figs. So I'm not finished the final answer. So I don't want to round completely. So that'll be the moles of calcium chloride. So step number one, finished. We found the moles of calcium chloride. So we have the moles here. Now, if we knew the moles over here of silver nitrate, then we would be able to calculate the volume. So second step is calculating the moles then of the silver nitrate, starting with the moles here <clears throat> of the calcium chloride. Hopefully you're thinking mole ratio here. So from moles of calcium chloride to moles of silver nitrate, I'll use the two here and the one here. So again, I've <clears throat> changed colors to the red to ma match the colors of the coefficients in the balanced equation. So we come up here with 0 0.0315 now moles of silver nitrate. Okay, so the final step will be to calculate the volume of silver nitrate, since that's what we were asked to find. And we can see that the formula for volume, N over C, so we've just found N, 0 0.0315 <clears throat> moles, divided by the concentration of 0.282 moles per liter. And we finish there with 0 0.11170 uh, liters. Now, how many sig figs are we looking at? Let's back up. The calculation, here we saw the concentration have three sig figs. The mole calculation came from the moles of calcium chloride, which came from originally three sig figs here and three here. So I'm looking at three in the final answer. So we'll round to 0 0.112 liters or 112 milliliters. So 112 milliliters are required of the silver nitrate at that concentration in order to precipitate all the chloride ions in that calcium chloride sample. All right, a second question. 0.25 grams of magnesium ribbon is combined with 40 mils of 0 0.50 mole per liter hydrochloric acid. So I'm asking you to determine the concentration of that magnesium chloride solution produced. So see if you can take this one start to finish. Um, I would definitely begin with a balanced equation and list the given and then required information. Okay, so as you set up your balanced equation and list the given, you realize you've been given mass of the first reagent, concentration and volume of the second. So we're actually being asked for the concentration of the product. Therefore, we're in a limiting reactant situation because is it the mass of magnesium or is it the moles of HCl in that concentration and volume of solution that is determining the magnesium chloride concentration? Well, let's remember here that a piece of magnesium is being put into 40 mils of the acid. So the products, the gas, hydrogen gas forms and it escapes and this magnesium chloride solution is still has the volume of the 40 mils of acid that we started with. And so <clears throat> the solute is magnesium chloride, but that solvent is water, and we assume we still have the same 40 milliliters. So I've already converted to liters, maintaining the three sig figs. Okay, so now this becomes a limiting reagent question. So I suggest you look at, at moles that you have, moles that you need, determining the, determine the limiting reagent and then continue to calculate moles of the product and concentration of the product. Okay, so I've calculated mass over molar mass to get the moles of magnesium, C times V to get the moles of HCl. I use the mole ratio, one to two, of the magnesium to the acid to show that 0 0.02056 moles of acid would be required to react all the magnesium. <clears throat> you can see here, when I compare to what I actually have, that I don't have enough, and therefore the acid is limiting. So now that I know that the acid is limiting, I can use the amount of the HCl to determine the amount or moles of the magnesium chloride.
So I'll go ahead and use the mole ratio that I see here as two to one. And then in the last step, calculate the concentration of the magnesium chloride. Okay, so I started with the moles of the limiting reagent that we have, have, not that we need, that we have, converted that with the mole ratio to moles of the product, and then calculated the concentration of the magnesium chloride using the volume that I'd listed here. Final answer, 0 0.25 moles per liter, which is two sig figs, and that <clears throat> is consistent with the moles of acid originally coming from a concentration of two sig figs. This volume here had three sig figs, but two is smaller, and so I have two in my final answer. Okay, example three reads a lot different, uh, differently than the first two examples. Example three is just asking us for the concentration of ions, in particular hydroxide ions, in a solution of magnesium hydroxide. And so essentially, there's a beaker here, and we have a certain volume, right, of a particular concentration of magnesium hydroxide. So this is already an aqueous solution. That means that there are ions dissolved, right? Magnesium and hydroxide ions dissolved. We're just being asked for the concentration of hydroxide ions. So if you write an equation that shows the dissociation, the fact that these magnesium, this magnesium hydroxide solution is really magnesium ions, as well as hydroxide ions in solution, and balance the equation, we can do essentially the shortcut. Up in our mulch train there earlier in the lesson, I had a question or a shortcut where the concentration of the solution could be directly converted to the concentration of the ions using the mole ratio. And literally, there's no chemical change happening. We have a solution and we're just being asked what are the concentration of the ions. So when you have the concentration here of that solution, you can literally convert that to the concentration of the hydroxide or the ions. I'll show you what I mean. So in particular, the concentration of the hydroxide ions, we're going to start with 0 0.001 moles of this magnesium hydroxide per liter of solution. And so if you just use your mole ratio, take the moles of the magnesium hydroxide solute to the moles of the hydroxide ions and follow that ratio of 2 to 1. Then we're simply doubling the concentration here. You'll notice the moles of magnesium hydroxide cancel and that leaves us with moles of hydroxide per liter, which is the moles per liter of hydroxide ion in the solution. So essentially, it follows the mole ratio. So you can see 1 to 1 to 2. So whatever this number is, it's because the magnesium ions are 1 to 1, this will be the same concentration, and this one here will be double it. And that's the quickest type of solution stoichiometry question you could be asked. So recognize that it's not a chemical change happening. We don't have to write... Um, an equation involving different substances, we're literally just describing this solution, which is really aqueous hydrated ions of magnesium and hydroxide. Okay, last example. I'm asking for concentration of sodium ions in this solution, <clears throat> but I'm starting you off with a mass of sodium sulfate. So we can start by writing that dissociation equation, the idea that that sodium sulfate is converted to hydrated ions when it dissolves in water and we balance the equation. So there's two sodium ions for every one sulfate. Listing the given, we've been told the mass here, 1.61 grams, and we've been given the volume of the solution. So that's the volume that these hydrated ions are found in of sodium ions. It's also the volume <clears throat> that the sulfate ions are found in. Now the question's not asking us about sulfate ions, so I'll just ignore that and focus in on determining the concentration here. If you're thinking about first converting to liters, that's not a bad idea, so we'll divide by a thousand, maintain the four sig figs, and have our volume in liters. 
So I'm looking for this concentration. So how will we solve the problem? Well, we've got mass of one substance. We need concentration of another. So hopefully you're thinking from mass to moles, then to moles, and then to concentration. So these two about the sodium sulfate, these two about the sodium ions. So we'll start by finding the mass, the mole, sorry, of <clears throat> the sodium sulfate. You can either do mass over molar mass or set up factor label. Either way, you're taking that mass and dividing by molar mass. Okay, and so I've gone through the three steps. Converted mass with molar mass to moles of Na2SO4, and then mole ratio to convert moles of sodium sulfate to moles of sodium ions, and finally concentration, N over V, to find the concentration of the sodium ions. Okay, so you'll find in these solution stoichiometry questions, sometimes you're writing a balanced equation, double displacement might be happening, single displacement, um, and you'll do often three-step calculations there. In other cases, there'll just be a solution that you're given the concentration of to find the concentration of the ions. Just simply manipulate the mole ratio from the balancing coefficients. And in this last case, I'm showing you kind of a combination of the both where it's still the physical change of just dissolving a solid in water, but you're asked for the concentration of the ions. And so three steps are required, mass to moles, moles to moles of the new substance, and then the concentration of the ions in the end.